Hey guys, how's it going? So, in this tutorial, number 10, uh, we are going to start looking at navigation and user navigation. And uh, I have one in particular that I would like to show you guys, and I'm particularly pretty excited about this one. Uh, if you guys are familiar with the Google Play Store and the way the navigation works in there, then uh, you're going to be quite familiar with, with what we're going to be working on in this tutorial. And let me show you guys an example of what we will be working on. Okay, so here it is. So here is a sliding tab navigation, much like the one in the Google Play Store. And notice how the indicator will uh, grow wider or smaller depending on the tabs, which is a really cool feature and it'll blend slowly as it moves. And that's just a color that I added. The emulator is kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to swipe in this thing, but you get the idea. So I'm really excited about this guys. And uh, I do believe that user navigation is a really important aspect of, of a mobile application. You know, letting your users see your content as quickly as possible, as easily as possible, and making it feel just natural, you know? Not, they don't have to think about it. And that's hard to do sometimes, and I, and I feel like some, and it all depends on the setup of, of things. So that's why I, I wanna focus on the next couple tutorials, maybe three tutorials, on building this. And once we have this, once you guys have this, you guys will be able to play around with it, mix the colors, and really have the knowledge to uh, expand on. And you'll be able to really, I think, make some cool stuff, you know? And uh, I hope you guys come come out with this with, with yeah, with some, some great knowledge. And that's why I want to, this tutorial is gonna be a little long, but I do want to uh, remind you guys that I will, I will put the project, the entire project and the tutorials that are relevant to this so that you guys can follow along or copy and paste whatever you need to. But I do wanna do my best to uh, thoroughly explain some of the caveats and, and and the things that might be like, hey, what, why is this going on? Or, you know, because I think in the end, once you understand it, then you'll be able to take that knowledge and create your own user interfaces and, and, and stuff like that and get more familiar with Android in, in general. And so in the long run, it'll, it'll be beneficial rather than just taking the whole project and copying and pasting it, which uh, if you want to do, you know, feel free, <laughs> go ahead. But uh, for those of you that want to kind of, you know, dive a little deeper and get your little, get your get your hands dirty, you know, uh, bear with me, and I think in the end it, it'll it'll be worth it. Okay, so but this is the finished product that we will we will have when we are done. Okay, so let's dive in. Okay, this is the project that I already had set up and, and it's running. So let's go ahead and close that. And here is our fresh project. Okay, so let's start it. Let's make a new project, blank app, and we're gonna call it sliding tab layout okay oh yeah we'll already have one so we'll do sliding tab layout tutorial okay all righty so as usual xamarin sets us up with a pretty blank app and the first thing i want to do is change this minimum to 4.0 okay and xamarin will take care of the rest of that in our manifest and our first class that I want to make is going to be our sliding tab strip. And the tab strip is just going to be a custom linear layout with an orientation of horizontal. Okay. So, it, and it's just, and that's, that, that's going to, it's the sliding tab strip is going to, going to be the parent of all the tabs that you guys saw a few moments ago. Okay. So let's do that. Uh, sliding tab strip. Alrighty. So let's follow along. Okay, so there's going to be a few things, a few properties, and there's there's lots of default variables that uh, just for time's sake, and you know, not to not to keep not to bore you guys, uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste, and I'll and I will keep. Uh, let's see, I'll go ahead and note that just like so. So copy and paste here and then stop copy and paste here. So just the, uh, just some stuff that, you know, to keep you guys, you know, orientated. 
and let's go ahead and import the paint type. All right, that'll do that for us. And then sliding tab layout and sliding tab colorizer, uh, tab colorizer and all these are a uh, class that we have not yet created, okay? Same with this one as well. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and create that. We will start working on this one, but let's go ahead and create that so it shuts up. <laughs> uh, okay, add and new item class. And we'll call it sliding tab layout. Uh, let's, let's call it something different. I don't really like, let's see, sliding tab, scroll view. Because we're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, in, uh, inheriting from a horizontal scroll view. So this kind of makes more sense, sliding tab scroll view. So this is gonna be the holding the tab strip and it's gonna be scrolling for us, okay? So let's go ahead and change that. And let's go back over here and we'll, change this accordingly. Before I had it called tab layout, but I think this is a little more appropriate. Okay, so now it doesn't know what tab colorizer is and all that stuff, but that's okay. So let's kind of go, let's just push through and then we're gonna create this stuff later on. But I really wanna explain to you guys, you know, some of the some of the weird stuff that might go on and importing this over to uh, C Sharp and all that. Okay, so uh, the first thing we need is a, let's make a constructor, sliding tab, sliding tab, strip. And this is gonna be a one parameter constructor that goes and calls its two parameter constructor. Okay. And let's make our two parameter constructor trap strip and it will take a context and it will take an I an interface I attribute uh, attribute set I believe it's called and that will in turn call its base and we'll do a little bit of implement implementation of our own as well so let's go ahead and import that okay and those errors should go away. This one is not. Okay. So base doesn't really mean anything in this case because we have not yet inherited from anything. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and inherit from a linear layout. Like I said before, it's just this, this, this is gonna be a linear layout and with a horizontal uh, uh, orientation. So. And that's that. That's all it is. You know, that's all that we're doing. Is and it's gonna. And that's gonna hold each tab. Okay, so makes sense to to have a linear layout in this case. And let's set the first thing we want to set is a property, and we will call it or it's called uh, will not draw. We want to set the false, and you will see what it, see what it says right here. It says if the view doesn't do anything on its own, set this flag to allow further optimizations. But in this case, we are doing some further optimizations ourselves. So we would like to set that to false. Next, we would like to get the uh, density because we will be using that shortly. And the way we do that is get the display metrics and from there they will have, it will have the density. Next, we want to have something called the type value and make a new type value and use the context that we were given in the parameter. And we want to resolve an attribute, which we get from Android resource attribute dot color foreground, I believe is, yeah, what it's called. We give it the out value, true. And with that now, oops, with that, uh, we'll have an out view, we'll feed it some data. So then we can get the theme foreground. It goes out value dot data. Okay. And here's one of the things that we copy over and pasted as a default bottom border color. So this is the bottom border of the tab layout. Okay. Which will fill the entire tab strip. And here we would like to set the color. 
the Excel, the color alpha that is. We have not created this method yet, so it's going to give us an error, which we will fix by uh, creating one. And we want to use this this static variable. Okay, so let's go ahead and right click it, generate method step. All right, so from there, we'll continue on. And we want to set our default tab colorizer. And our default tab colorizer is going to be something that sets the color of, uh, sets the colors of our, basically our indicator, which is that little horizontal scrolling bar, the colors of it, and then sets the divider colors, which divides the little bar that divides each tab. So, um, because none of this is we're not we're not using any kind of library you know we're not we're using you know built-in stuff like linear layout scroll views but we're not using any third-party library so we really it's really gonna we got to build all of this stuff and we got to think about all of this stuff uh ourselves you know so that's what's really cool about this you know it, it, it's gonna take a little longer but you really get your hands dirty on this and um i just think that's the fun part you know so the next thing you want to do is this tab colorizer we'll have a method called set indicator colors. Okay. And that's where we give it the static value, the indicator colors, which is an array of integers that represents colors. Okay. And this will also have something called set divider colors, which you guessed it will set the, it's an array divider colors. In this case is an array of uh, integers that represent color values. Okay. So, from there, we'll go ahead and do, then this is gonna give us an error, simple tab colorizer, but we will implement it. So, you know, let's implement that right now, just so um, we get the idea of, you know, what the hell's going on while we're using those. So let's make a private class and it's gonna be called simple tab colorizer. And it's going to inherit from tab, uh, oops, simple, tab scroll view dot tab colorizer because we are going to make an interface for it as well. So this hasn't yet been done, but we will do it shortly. So we're going to have two arrays of integers and each one is going to hold integer values that represent uh, colors. Okay, so M divider, divide your colors. Okay, so then we want to, of course, have a getter that will return the color depending on the position. So get indicator color is what we're gonna call it. And with that, we're gonna return the indicator color of the, using the position. So position, and we want to use uh, modulus and M indicator colors dot length okay so and that's what, what that is doing with with for those of you not familiar with mod it mod just returns the remainder of it divides it and returns the remainder so if positions like you know zero then it's going to be zero color and if you only have two colors then it's going to switch back and forth it's going to go zero colors what say is green and the one index color is um you know blue so it's going to go green blue green blue green blue green blue you know, so it's going to keep on alternating. It'll do the same thing for three. It'll do a green, blue, red, or if you have four, green, blue, red, orange, green, blue, red, orange. And that's all that's doing for the mod. So there we have it. Um, sorry, and I forgot to, of course, add a return value. Okay, so let's do the same exact thing, but for the divider colors. Okay, so get divider colors also takes a position integer. And we'll do the same thing. So position mod uh, divider colors dot length oops and there we have it okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to have setters so let's let's do that and what we can do with that is we want to uh, make a property okay called uh, indicator indicator Oops, sorry guys, gotta keep forgetting values for right now. I don't know why. Uh, indicator colors. 
and this only needs to do the setting, okay? So set, and we want to do m indicator colors equals value, okay? Next, we'll have to do the same thing, but for the divider colors. So int, and we'll do divider colors. It's going to be a set, and m divider colors equals value. Remember, value is a keyword that takes in the value. So when you actually call this method, we're going to do something like uh, indicator colors, which will be our property, equals, you know, new int, which is going to be like an array of like a whole bunch of colors. You know what I mean? And then that will be the value, the new int of the array. So it knows to do that if you guys aren't familiar with uh, properties, but if you are, then you know exactly what's going on. So uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to like to um, let's just go ahead and generate this because this we're implementing from a interface and these are the of course the methods that we're implementing from okay but they uh, haven't been actually made yet so let's go ahead and do that right now okay so let's see if uh, the Visual Studio will do that for us and I don't think it's gonna really want to do that so that's fine. Let's go ahead and go into our sliding tab scroll view. All right. And then with that, we're going to make a interface inside of the class. Okay. So I uh, want to do public interface. And for those of you not familiar with interfaces, basically they're just methods that, uh, or I'm sorry, like, uh, you know, interfaces that contain method signatures but they don't contain the definitions for them like other in other words they don't implement them they just say hey whoever implements from me make sure they uh implement these methods okay so then that's all that's all that we're doing here we're just specifying the ones that we've already implemented here they are right here so if we didn't implement them here then it would get mad at us and throw us in there and say hey you didn't implement this you have to and but we already we already have so we're good on here, so and that's all we need to do. And while we're at it, let's make this class public. And let's go back up here and also make this class public. Okay, so we are getting somewhere. And that's all this is doing. This is default tab colorizer. Uh, and this is the, if the user doesn't supply one, we'll do this, okay? So otherwise, this that's why we, we're doing this. and. Let's change these to they're not setters. Remember the properties we, we made properties, and let's do that. And we will do equals. We're actually setting it now, okay? And we'll do the same thing here. Equals, and that should do it, okay? So. That's all that we need to do there for those. And now let's continue on. We still got a few more things to do. And let's do the same thing, but basically for the bottom border. Remember the bottom border is what's going to be the, uh, you know, the, the bottom border of the whole, of the whole tab strip, okay? So uh, we wanna set the thickness of it, okay? And the way we do that, we have a parameter up there that we uh, specified, which we can play with. I mean, you guys, if you guys want to play with this stuff up here, like these values, feel free, you know, uh, these are just the, this is the green, this is the blue. That was the indicator color. The divider colors are all the same. Um, but if you want to change all that stuff, you know, I mean, that's the best way to learn, you know, just play with it and see what they do and kind of, you know, manipulate it and make it bigger and smaller and, you know, see what happens. And, you know, that, that's kind of stuff's the best kind of learning to me. So, uh, Next thing we want to do is we want to instantiate our paint and the paint is basically in this case, we're just going to give paint a color and that's pretty much applies to this whole program, this whole application. We just use paints to give a color. So when we draw on the canvas, when we do the, when we override the on draw method, we're going to make a count, uh, we're going to give the can canvas the paint color and then the paint takes its color and, and draws that, that specified color. Okay. So, uh, that's all that it is that we're doing here for paint and zero X C five C five C five. 
that's going to be basically, this is basically like gray. Okay, so let's go ahead and implement this because we have not yet. And basically what we need to do with this method that we just implemented, it's uh, we need to return the color. Okay, so, and because this is an integer value, but we want to, C5 is actually like, you know, this is a, a hex value. So that each, each one's C5 is a byte, that's a byte, that's a byte. Um, and we want to get the values from it in color. So we want to get, this is the red component, the green component, and the blue component. So all that will make up uh, gray. Okay, so let's do that right now. And we got to use this a lot, so that's why I made a method for it. So return color dot RGB, and then you do color dot get red component. Let's change this parameter from P to color so it's more explanatory. Uh, color, and then we want to do color dot get green color, and then color dot get blue. And this is basically our built-in methods that will extract the correct component color, okay? So that's all that's doing there. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we would like to uh, set the indicator thickness. Remember the indicator is that little horizontal scroll bar that scrolls whether scrolls for whatever tab is uh, currently selected. Okay, so we want to do the same thing, times it by the density to get the correct dense uh, to get the correct value for it, depending on the screen density. Okay, because every you know there's so many screen sizes for Android that you need to do stuff like this to ensure it's properly, uh, you know, drawn on. So the paint, we're gonna do new paint. We'll set that color later, okay? And the next thing we wanna do is the divider height, which the dividers, there's many of them, and they, they divide the base of the, each tab, okay? So we have a constant variable for that, so set it to that. Divider paint equals new paint. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is we want to set the stroke width of this paint. Okay, so let's do that. We have a, a constant variable for it, and thickness, and DIP, and density. Okay, so that's all that we need to do for the constructor. All right. The next thing we want to do is we want to make some properties, and uh. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're going to want to make a property for initializing the custom tab colorizer. And remember the tab colorizer is this guy right here that returns the proper colors of in the array of colors. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do that. So sliding tab view, scroll view, dot tab colorizer, and we'll call this custom tab, oops, custom tab colorizer. All right, and we'll just need a setter for this, no getter. And we wanna set our global custom tab colorizer to the value that we give it when we do give it a value, if we do, because we don't need a custom tab colorizer. If the user wants to give one, we will, but you're gonna have a default one if uh, if none is supplied, which that's what I was using. I didn't give it a custom one. I just used the default in the example that I showed you guys earlier. And uh, you know, to me, it looks pretty good. So selected indicator colors. Here's where we actually set the uh, the array of integers. Okay, so here it's right here. Custom tab colorizer. You want to set this to null because if we're having to set the selected indicator colors, then that means that there is no custom tab colorizer supplied. So we're gonna set our own. So the default tab colorizer dot indicator colors equals the value. And then we're gonna invalidate it to force it to redraw itself. Okay, so oops. Well, we wanna do the same thing, but for the divider colors. All right, divider colors. And uh, default colorizer, like before, we want to set it to 
null and equals value. There we go. All righty. That is done. And the next thing we want to do is we want to actually implement the uh, set color alpha. Okay. So let's do that now. And this is going to return an integer with the alpha value. So it should be. Uh, la, 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 la. We want to give it the alpha. Let's let's go ahead and change this these parameters. When you when you generate it, they kind of give it the value or the parameter name that you're giving it to. And sometimes they're a little vague, so let's go ahead and change that to something a little less generic. Okay, so similar to what we did in the get color from integer method, we want to do a get red component and get green component from the color and finally get blue component from the color. Okay, so there we have it. And that just sends back the uh, alpha, okay? Next, we want to implement a method called on viewer changed, on viewer page page changed. Um, and it'll be kind of like weird right now, like why are we doing this? But in the tab layout, we're gonna have a view pager, right? And in the tab layout, the view pager is gonna be scrolled. So when the user scrolls the screen, like I was doing earlier, the view page, the page scrolled will be uh, called. And basically when that page is scrolled, we also want to scroll the the indicator in this the little, little colored indicator, we're gonna wanna scroll that, right? Um, to match accordingly to what the user is doing. And this basically, what it does is uh, the tab layout will call this method and we're gonna set some global variables right here, selected position. So this is the position that the user has selected to go to, the tab in other words, and selection offset. This is the offset, so from where they were to where they're going. And we're gonna to wanna to invalidate, which essentially when it invalidates called, it forces it to draw uh, this all over again, okay? And when that happens, the on draw method is called. And that's the method that we're gonna override right now, okay? So on draw, and that's not on draw. <laughs> Getting a little ahead of myself, so on, Draw, there you are, which comes with a canvas that we will manipulate uh, soon enough, okay? So tab layout, which holds the tab, calls on viewer. On viewer says, okay, this is a position that the user is on. This is this this is the offset, okay? So they're on tab two, they wanna go to tab three, okay? So set the global variables, and then this guy will call invalidate. Okay, this needs to be redrawn, which calls on draw and says, okay, I need to redraw my view. And the specified code is what we're gonna write that will do this. So this, this method is the most important one in this class, uh, just because it, it, it just constantly what's doing the drawing and, and it gives you that clean animation look. So first let's get the height of the view, which remember the view is just a linear layout. And we wanna get the child count. So we wanna know how many children this linear, linear layout has. In other words, we wanna know how many tabs are in this Okay, and I think I did that right. Okay, so yeah, I might have spelled that wrong, sorry. Okay, and the next thing you wanted to get is the uh, divider height and pixels. And the way we do that is we've got to do a little bit of a calculation, okay? And don't want to put too much emphasis on this because it's kind of hard to explain what's going on here. But if you look, uh, what I did was I kind of just stared at it for a while and, and changed some values and just seen what effect what, and then I kind of started to realize what it is. So it's pretty self-explanatory, but you kind of got to stare at it for a few minutes. And just for time's sake, I'm just going to run over this. But this is basically getting the divider height in pixels, okay? And we will use that very shortly, okay? So now let's draw the thick colored underline. Uh, below the current selection. So this is the actual indicator. So we're gonna manually draw it, okay? Current selection. So the first thing we wanna check is if the child count is greater than zero, because if there's no tabs, uh, it's, you know, that's not gonna make sense. So let's do, let's call it tab count, because it kind of makes more sense. I keep calling it a tabs, which is what it is, but 
let's name the variable that, okay? So tab count. If it's greater than zero, then we want to draw. But if not, then, well, we don't want to do anything. So that makes sense. The selected title. So we want to get the, uh, the view at the selected position, which we now have uh, because of this guy right here. So this is the view that the user is trying to scroll to. Okay, so we want to get the left coordinate of that view. Now, left, we want to get the right. Okay, and we want to get the color because this might be a different color, you know? So we want to do tab colorizer, which we have not yet specified. <laughs> Let me do that here. So let's do sliding, uh, sliding tab scroll view. Tab colorizer, tab colorizer equals, and we want to check to see if the custom tab colorizer is not null. And if it's not null, that means the user or the programmer has supplied it their own custom tab colorizer. So let's initialize it to that. Otherwise, let's use our default because we need to use uh, some tab colorizer. So let's use our own if it's not if another one is not supplied. Okay, so tab colorizer, and then we want to get the indicator color, get indicator color based on the selected position. Okay, and uh, let's see, yeah, so, so I'm hoping you guys are realizing kind of what this thing is coming into play for. So get indicator color, so we're going to like say the second tab, right? Well, if there's only, if there's two colors, then it's gonna do uh, one because zero, one. So the second, it's zero index. So this is the second tab, which has one position divided by two, which is one. So it'll return the second color that's specified, okay? So it knows now the color that it needs to be, all right? So now we have, we have those values. We can do, we wanna check to see if it's if the selection offset is greater than zero because there's no offset then the scrolling is done okay and we don't need to go any farther but more than likely it's not so let's do tab counts and we also want to check to see if uh yeah minus one i'm sorry we also want to check to see if the selected position is less than the last tab because this means it's basically out of bounds. This means it keeps you want to scroll right, but hey, we're already at the end, so we don't need to do any more scrolling. And if we do though, if we need to, if we do need to do more scrolling, then we want to get the next color because we're going to blend the colors like you saw in the beginning where it was blending from green to blue. Uh, this is where we're going to want to do that at. And the way we do that is we get the selected position plus one. Okay, so now we have the next color that we need to be, and then we check to see is the color equal to the next color? And if it's not, then we need to blend them, okay? And that's what we do in this method that is called blend color that we have not yet made yet, but we will here in a second, okay? And we just need the offset. So how far, the offset just to keep track of how far are they apart? So if it's really far from tab two, it's gonna be more green. Say if it's going from green to blue, but as it gets closer to tab two, it's gonna turn more green, or sorry, it's gonna turn more blue than it is green. So this selection offset will keep track of, because remember this this on draw method, the whole scroll is not, it's not just called once. On draw is called like four, five, six times or something um, before it ever, before it actually does it. So it keeps drawing itself, drawing itself, drawing itself. And uh, that's the effect you get. So let's go ahead and generate this method stub. Okay, so blend color, just to get rid of that error. And we'll implement that in a bit, but let's go on. So let's get the next title. So we want to get the next title. Okay, the next view, which will be selected position plus one. All right. And we know we're not the end. We can use plus one because, hey, like, what if this is, we're, the, we're at the end, plus one, there's nothing. But we know there's not, we know that because we check to see that we are not at the very end. So we know that it's safe to use that, okay? And we want to get the left coordinate of the uh, the next uh, tab, okay? So we will call it next title uh, dot left, okay? And 
1.0 f this is a calculation how to get like the left coordinate of the, of the next uh tab sorry about that offset times the left of the original tab okay so you want to do the same thing for the right coordinate offset times next title dot right plus 1.0 f minus Selected offset uh, minus M selected offset uh, times the right of the previous. Okay, so let me just copy and paste this over. I made a little typo. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, so what this is saying is that it's giving me an error. So let's see why. Uh, ah, so I was supposed to do, take that parenthesis off. All right, so give you guys a second to look at that. That's the right way to do it. Okay, so what this is getting is the left and right coordinate of the next child. So it's getting the scroll, uh, basically basically the scroll goal, like, like, you know, where it needs to scroll to, okay? Like, you know, the coordinate that it needs to end up at. So. And that's the next title. So this is a little calculation. If you look at it, it kind of starts to make sense. You know, how far it still needs to go my, times like the left coordinate of the next title, right? And then you want to add for the offset of it. So, um, you know, once again, like there's some little little math that you need to figure out. And once you kind of look at it, it starts to make sense. Like, okay, I see why you need to do that. Um, okay, so next we want to use the paint value, right? This is where the paint value comes in. So we want to paint the color of the uh, indicator and the way we do that is we have the color remember we have it up here and we want to get the color from integer and we already got the correct color and we want to get the color so we want to this is the integer value so we want to extract all the green the blue and the red components that make a full color and we want to paint it okay so that's all that we're doing there and here's what we actually want to draw on the canvas so we want to draw a rectangle on the cat on the canvas we want to get the left coordinate and it's next thing we want to get the, the top coordinate which is height minus the thickness okay because we want to give it enough room to be drawn the thickness of it is just the the height of the actual the height is the height of the view so the whole tab strip minus the thickness so actual actually the height of the uh the actual bar okay the uh, little horizontal scrolling bar and we want to give it a right component and then we height we want to say our height it wants to be uh, the bottom it should be at the very bottom of this so we give it the height value so the, if the height's 10 then we want to put it at 10 so at the very bottom okay and the next thing we want to do is we want to give it a paint which is here which basically gives it the color which we have already specified right here okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to create the Let's see, creates vertical uh, dividers between tabs. Okay, so the little vertical dividers that you guys saw probably that separate each tab. So I want to do separator top equals. So the top of it is going to be, this is where we got to use a pixel and divide it by two. Okay. It, and change that times to minus. Okay, sorry about that, guys. And so let's do a loop. Okay, we want to do it for every child that there is. We want to do a loop, or a, a uh, we want to do this that many times. Okay, because we want to add a divider for every one, except at the end. And this is perfect for that. So we want to get the child, or get this view that we're at. So what tab are we on? Okay, the way we can do it is get child at, and then we want to paint it the correct color. Okay, and we use that by the paint. We do color, and we do get color from integer, and then this is the one that can have different colors. The dividers can have different co colors, so we want to use get divider color at position I, because they could be different, but they don't have to be. Um, but that will take care of that. Now we will actually want to draw the line, and then the line is just a vertical line. So we want to do child dot right. The start x is child dot right, and then we want to do start y would be 
the top of it. So then we wanted to do separator top. Okay. And then this, we want to stop at child dot right because it's just a line. So we want to give it, make it a thin line. Okay. And separator top plus the divider height would, will give us the stop Y. So stop at this, so at the bottom of it. Okay. And then we just want to give it the paint, which is, excuse me, essentially just the color. Okay. And the last thing we wanted to do is we want to actually draw the border. Okay, and we'll only, there's only gonna be one border for the whole entire tab strip. And here's where we draw it, okay? So bottom border thickness is going to be the top of, of this rectangle. And then we wanna give it the width, the width of the entire view. And we wanna give it the height, the bottom is the height, so it's at the very bottom. The bottom border should be at the bottom, which that makes sense, right? <laughs> and next we wanna give it the paint, which once again is just essentially the color that we've already set over here in our constructor, remember? Which is great, okay? So we've already done that, and that's it. That's the on draw method, okay? So this thing will get called very, very, very often. So you wanna make sure that's working good. Next, we wanna actually implement the blend colors method, okay? So we're gonna do a, something called an inverse ratio. So the selection offset, remember, is how far it is from its destination, okay? And depending on that, we want to blend it that much. So we do one minus the ratio. Oops. Uh, let's call this ratio just because it'll make more sense in this context. Okay. So the way uh, that works is as it gets closer and closer to the tab, it should turn that color uh, more and more to that color than it was originally the tab before it. So we want to get the red value, the red component of this color. So get red component of color and times that by the ratio okay and then we want to do we want to add also the red component of the next color uh, times the inverse ratio all right um and actually what we want to do is we want to, let's see, is that right? Next color, color, that should be next color. So color one should be the first component. So, okay, yeah, so let's switch this around. I'm sorry guys. So let's just do um, color one and color two. Okay, because it doesn't really matter the next color and the color, it just matters that you're blending them. So color one. It'll kind of make it um, make a little more sense, okay? And color two. So that's what we had before, but this kind of makes more sense. So we're just blending two colors, and that's all that we want to do there. Okay, so we want to do the same thing for the the blue and the green component, okay? So here's our green, here's our blue. And I just copied and pasted it real quick because of the fact that it's pretty much the same thing, just using a different method. Change that to blue, and then we'll copy and paste that back over here. Copy and paste that over there. Okay, so there we go. And next thing we wanna do with this, and we want to return the color RGB, we want to cast each one to an integer, green and blue. And we can pass in the color, we can return an integer, okay? So that will do, that will, that will compile. And thanks to polymorphism <laughs> and all, we, all is good there. So, and I believe that's everything that we need to do with this yeah, with this class, you know, this is basically the tab strip. This is the linear layout that's gonna hold all of the tabs. And we're gonna actually implement this tab strip and instantiate it inside of the tab scroll view where we'll have a, a method called populate view or populate strip or something. And we'll constantly add more views and then it'll add more tabs to this view, okay? So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Let me show you again what 
we're working on and what we created. This is uh, the project that was before. This isn't the project that we ran, but right now we worked on this thing right here. We worked on the tab strip. So this is each individual tab, right? And this indicator view is what we worked on, the blending of colors. That's what we worked on. So as it gets closer and closer to tab two, it's blending and blending and more to blue. And then now it'll go to green. So it'll get closer and closer to tab three. It's gonna blend more and more to green, okay? And that's pretty pretty uh, pretty neat. So just wanted to show you guys that, what, you, what we worked on. And uh, in the next tutorial, I don't wanna make these tutorials too long. So in the next tutorial, we'll, we'll split this up pretty uh, evenly. In the next tutorial, we'll look on the tab scroll view and how we actually implement the tab strip. And then probably in the following tutorial, we'll actually finish up hopefully and uh, actually implement the tab scroll view and then uh, we'll have our finished product. So stay tuned and thanks for watching guys.